If there's one thing we can say for sure when sampling the country's best-known restaurants, it's that there's no one right way to enjoy eating. From pizza joints and delis to oyster houses and donut shops, these are the most famous restaurants in America. With so many incredible restaurants from coast to coast, it can be difficult to stand out, but it certainly helps when you're the setting of one of the most famous movie scenes of all time. And thanks to Meg Ryan's cries of ecstasy to Billy Crystal, Katz's Deli is known the world over for its appearance in When Harry Met Sally. I'll have what she's having. But Katz's is more than just a bit of movie trivia. Opened in 1888, this iconic deli has remained as popular as ever thanks to its delectable menu. The most notable items are the pastrami and corned beef sandwiches. These overstuffed creations are made with meat that's cured for up to 30 days, giving it a flavor you simply won't find at your local corner deli. If you're visiting Katz's, you'll want to get there early as it's not uncommon for lines to stretch out the door. Once inside, guests can sit at the same table where Meg and Billy once sat and gaze at the cornucopia of memorabilia and photos around the restaurant. And if you can't make it to New York, don't worry, as Katz's ships nationwide. Mystic Pizza is another restaurant that benefited from an appearance on the silver screen. But instead of simply serving as a location in a movie, the entire film was named after the restaurant. The 1988 romantic comedy Mystic Pizza stars Julia Roberts and follows the lives of three pizza parlor waitresses. The restaurant can thank screenwriter Amy Jones in particular for the publicity. Jones was summering in the town of Mystic, Connecticut when the local pizza place caught her eye. She was inspired and chose to use the location as the main setting of her script. The movie was filmed in and around the town of Mystic. Although the restaurant scenes weren't actually filmed at the real Mystic Pizza, but once the movie became a huge hit, the pizza parlor was redesigned to look precisely the way it did in the film. After the film was released, people flocked to the quiet southern Connecticut town. Customers would line up outside waiting for a chance to grab some memorabilia and maybe get a slice of pizza. It got so busy that the owners had to open a second location nearby. Entering into the Union Oyster House is like stepping back in time, which makes sense as it's the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the country, having opened in 1826. And the building itself has been standing in the same spot on Boston's Union Street even longer, probably soon after the Puritans landed on Plymouth Rock. During all this time, the Union Oyster House has seen some famous faces walk through its doors, including Massachusetts Congressman Daniel Webster and John F. Kennedy. The latter always enjoyed his privacy in one of the upstairs booths, which has since been dedicated in his memory. Adding to the restaurant's lore, it's also reportedly the location where the first toothpick was used. If you're ever in Boston, grab a seat at the Oyster House's famed U-shaped raw bar, throw back some bivalves, and breathe in the history. The modern fine dining scene in the United States can likely be traced back to Napa Valley in the mid-1990s, which is when chef Thomas Keller opened the French Laundry. Since then, the iconic location has widely been considered to be one of the best restaurants in not just the country, but the entire planet. In fact, it's twice been named the best restaurant in the world in 2003 and 2004. The Michelin Guide has awarded the French Laundry three stars, its highest rating, every year since 2007. So just what exactly makes this dining experience so special? Each night, two tasting menus are offered, including a vegetarian option. These menus are based entirely on what fresh ingredients the restaurant has acquired that day. It all begins with respect for the ingredients, and the French Laundry's ingredients couldn't be fresher. Often, the products come from boutique purveyors. Eating at the French Laundry can be quite a commitment. Dinners can last up to three hours and cost more than $300. But customers keep showing up to this rustic restaurant for a once-in-a-lifetime feast. In a city like New Orleans, one of the culinary capitals of the world, there are a number of iconic restaurants. But one in particular stands out among the rest. Commander's Palace is famous for many things. First and foremost is its staying power. It was founded in the city's Garden District in 1893. Next is the food, of course. Commander's Palace has received seven James Beard Foundation Awards, the top recognition in the culinary world. And though you might find some locals who disagree, this New Orleans landmark is the place to go for a bowl of seafood gumbo. Commander's Palace is also well known for the culinary talents that have passed through its doors. 
Some of the top chefs in the country have worked in the kitchen, the most notable of whom is Emeril Lagasse. And just in case his restaurant needed any more attention, it got some in 1974 when the owners gave the outside of the building an eye-catching new coat of paint, affectionately known as Commander's Blue. If you're in New Orleans, you can't miss Commander's Palace, literally and figuratively. St. Elmo Steakhouse has been standing in the same spot in downtown Indianapolis for more than a century, which makes it the city's oldest steakhouse in its original location. It's such an iconic establishment that it made it onto national TV when it was featured on the NBC sitcom Parks and Recreation. <laughs> one rare porterhouse, one rare sirloin, and a rasher of bacon. Oh. That's the Lord's work you're doing, John. While customers certainly come for the steak, the must-have item is actually the shrimp cocktail. St. Elmo refers to it as world-famous on its menu and reminds patrons that most meals at the establishment begin with an order of the four jumbo shrimp and spicy signature cocktail sauce. Every entree at St. Elmo Steakhouse comes with either a glass of tomato juice or a bowl of navy bean soup, consisting of beans, ham, tomatoes, and parsley. Since the restaurant has been around so long, no one is entirely sure how this peculiar tradition originated. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ask any New Yorker the first place they think of when they hear the word steakhouse, and they will invariably answer Peter Luker. The iconic Brooklyn restaurant's history dates back to 1887, when it opened as Carl Luger's Cafe, Billiards and Bowling Alley. Peter Luger owned the restaurant, while his nephew Carl managed the kitchen. Following the elder Luger's death, the establishment fell into disrepair. Fortunately, a patron by the name of Sal Foreman entered an auction to purchase Peter Luger's. He won largely because he was the only one to bid. Soon thereafter, the restaurant was quickly back up and running. Three generations later, it's still owned by the family and reigns as one of the best-known New York steakhouses. Zagat's survey has rated it the best such restaurant in the city for three straight decades, and it even earned a Michelin star. It's also since opened a second location on Long Island. Ironically enough, Peter Luger's most famous dish may not be a steak offering, but instead the thick-cut bacon. Thick cut is an understatement, as this bacon is closer to the size of a pork chop. Fortunately for those outside of New York, the famous bacon is also available at grocery stores and shipped nationwide. The Bluebird Cafe is actually more famous as a music venue than a restaurant. But since it serves a full menu of appetizers, sandwiches, and drinks, it deserves to be on this list. Opened in 1982, it's an institution not just in its home state of Tennessee, but across the whole country music landscape. This unsuspecting 90-seat venue located in a strip mall just outside downtown Nashville has played host to a who's who of stars, from Leanne Rimes and Taylor Swift to Garth Brooks and Keith Urban. It's not just the stage where you'll see famous faces. Some of the Bluebirds' famous visitors have included the likes of Bono, John Bon Jovi, Cher, Barbara Walters, and Al Gore. And in case it needed even more of a spotlight, it was also featured on the hit TV show, Nashville. And in 2008, the original owner sold the restaurant to the Nashville Songwriters Association International. Selling to a not-for-profit organization as opposed to an individual or corporation allowed the venue to keep its close relationship with the community. Voodoo Donut is still in its infancy compared to most of the other restaurants on this list. But in just a short time, it's amassed such a cult following that it's now one of the most famous foodie destinations in the country. It all started back in 2003 when two Portlanders discovered that there were precisely zero donut shops in downtown Portland. That inspired them to open a tiny storefront where they began turning out delicious but unconventional donuts. It didn't take long for the public to catch on to what Voodoo was up to, and within a month it was featured in the national press. It now has 10 locations across five states, and you'll likely find hungry customers lined out the door and around the block at all of them. They become so popular, people from all over the world stop by for a taste. So what sort of crazy concoctions has Voodoo been baking up? Some of their most popular donuts include the Bacon Maple Bar, which is topped with maple frosting and bacon the Marshall Mathers with vanilla frosting and mini M&Ms, and the Oh Captain, My Captain, which is covered in vanilla frosting and Cap'n Crunch cereal. And of course, let's not forget the shop's namesake item, which is a donut shaped like a voodoo doll filled with raspberry jelly. Individually, Pat's and Gino's are the two most well-known cheesesteak outposts in the cheesesteaks capital city. Together, they form one of the most famous culinary destinations in the country. It helps that they're located directly across the street from each other, 
Debate has always swirled around where these two sandwich restaurants stand in the evolution of the cheesesteak, not to mention which one is better. But here's what we can say for sure. Nearly a century ago, Pat Oliveri was operating a small hot dog stand in Philadelphia. One day, he decided to try something new for lunch and cooked some chopped meat on his grill, threw it on an Italian loaf, and topped it with onions. Thus, the cheesesteak was born. Fast forward 36 years to when Philadelphia native Joey Vento opened Gino Steaks across the street. According to Vento, he was the one who was truly the first to add cheese to the steak sandwich. Precisely how it came to be is a moot point now, as the cheesesteak is synonymous with the city of brotherly love. Both shop sandwiches are fairly similar – strips of ribeye steak, melted cheese, and grilled onions on an Italian roll. The main difference is the type of cut, believe it or not. Pat's steak is chopped, whereas Gino slices their steak. Joe Stone Crab is now a Miami institution, but it had the most humble of beginnings. It opened in 1913 as nothing more than a lunch stand on a dirt road by the beach with a few picnic tables out front. It didn't even serve stone crab. Most people didn't know they were edible. Owner Joe Weiss cooked up fish sandwiches while his wife Jenny served tables. About a decade after opening, a Harvard biologist working at a nearby aquarium came in one day with a sack full of stone crabs. Joe threw them in boiling water and the rest is history. They're still served the same chilled and cracked way that they were back then, but the restaurant's clientele has evolved from locals to an incredibly impressive and wide-reaching list of celebrities. Everyone from Al Capone and J. Edgar Hoover to Amelia Earhart and Jennifer Lopez has stopped by for a stone crab claw. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite restaurants are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!